at, with Pinkberry Ventures. Uh, Pinkberry sells frozen yogurt. So welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, come on in. So you're a customer of uh, a Business by Design. Yes, sir. We just sir. had the lead executive on here talking about it. Uh, Business by Design has had a radical transformation over the past couple of years, mainly because uh, it's been a moving train, as he says. Mm -hmm. um, and a core platform for them. They nailed some of the core things around multi-tenancy and so on and so forth. And so now they're going to the next level as a full-on platform. You're a user of this product. So well, tell us, one, how's it been? Um, honestly, it's been a pretty good experience <laughs> so far. Uh, I mean, we were able to implement Business by Design in um, 12 weeks, so that's you know the shortest ERP implementation I've ever been a part of. Um, it's been a little slow to get to the next version, but so far our users are happy, and uh, we've been able to scale the solution pretty well. 12 weeks? 12 weeks. 12 weeks, and, but you've been working on this project for what, a year, year and a half? I've been there about a year and a half. Year and but, a half. I mean, the implementation was 12 weeks, and now I'm just supporting it. All right, so the, 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 the folks want to know out there, okay, what is Pinkberry, okay? Frozen yogurt, so tell us, one, about the company, yep. and then we were talking before we came on about the pressure to go public, mm -hmm. an IPO, you guys are a retailer on the yogurt side, so I want to explain the business, what is the product, what's the back end look like, and why the motivation to go to the business by design, and, and mm -hmm. talk about the success you've had with this new rollout, because it's been pretty phenomenal. Yeah, so um, Pinkberry was founded in 2005 in Los Angeles, um, we sell a very unique, a very refreshing tart frozen yogurt. Um, we own uh, about 20 company-owned stores, and we have about 100 stores that we license out to different franchisees around the globe. Um, we've been growing pretty rapidly in the last couple years. Um, and in order to support that with limited resources, we had to pick a platform early on um, that was going to scale with our growth. So, you know, we looked at business by design even back when it was a new product and we thought that, that was going to be the way to go. So how many retail outlets did you say you had? We have 120 right now globally. And you, what's your growth look like? I mean, pretty solid? Uh, yeah, I mean, this year alone we're planning to open 100 more stores. So you guys are growing. So this is like ideally the perfect cloud-like use case. Exactly. I mean, it's like you're growing like crazy, very profitable, you kind of got this back-end system. You got to go public, which basically means you got to report everything. Yeah. Got to have all these governance checked off. You got to have checks, yeah, everything in place, security, controls. So they got a platform as a service with essentially business by design. So, so take us through this. What happened? Where are you now? Um, where we used to be is we used uh, basically everything was in Excel and we used QuickBooks. Um, we've, we've moved far beyond that to to really have a more regimented, controlled system. You know, obviously our, our CFO is very happy with that. Um, and it's gotten us the results that we need. I mean, we haven't expanded our support staff at all, and we've doubled the number of stores that we've had during the time we've had by design, so. So we had Rainer on um, Zin now, who's the yeah. executive in charge. We talked about the core platform. He checked off kind of the boxes, and he took a lot of bullets in the industry. You know, early on, SAP had the tech, cloud was emerging, cloud was kind of you know, developing very fast. Obviously on the public cloud, multi-tenancy was a big issue. Yeah. They checked that box off. But it's been a moving train, as he said. He then said they roll out the platform. Now this is a customer business platform as a service. That's what you're taking advantage of. So tell us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, <laughs> Whatever, yeah. However you can share without getting um, yeah. shot on the way out. I mean, so, so the good for me is there's a few things. One is that SAP has been responding to their customers in the past few years by implementing the things that we've actually requested from them. So, you know, to have them actually listening to us, listening to the small, mid-sized company, which, you know, most other large ERP providers, it's not something that they're necessarily willing to do. You're not, you're not on Oracle's hit list. <laughs> Put it that way. I, I used to do PeopleSoft implementations, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's really important. We'll get to, to Oracle us. in a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll stay on this for now. Um, also, I see, uh, you know, as the future with this product is the ability to consume all of these services on demand. I think the platform is, is there. Um, and I see, you know, adding value over time with the platform. So SAP's listening to you guys, which is very good yeah. news. We heard the same message. Let's talk about the software. There's been a lot of complaints about um, updates and, and lifecycle software, new versions coming out. I mean, it's a cloud yeah. solution. Um, they're really, really focused and hypersensitive to testing. 
Um, right. Is that something that they've been communicating directly to you? And obviously, some are you getting the new software? Yes or no? And has it been because of testing? Um, it's it, it that whole cycle could be improved a bit. Um, we are we've been on the same version for about a year and a half, where current customers have had the new version for a year now. So it's the upgrade process has been a little slow. I'd like to see that cycle improved, and it has been based on testing results, so I'd, I'd like to see those improved as well. Um, I think that, you know, the existing customer base, while small, we would yeah. definitely want to be on the cutting edge with all the rest of the new customers. What's their, what's their wrap for you, to you? Like, okay, sorry, everyone else gets the new stuff. Is uh, it? What they, what they told me was that there were just some, some issues migrating between the two versions because they were significantly different. Um, so there were some testing issues with migration. All right, so That's where, where are you at now with the, with the Business by Design in terms of the rollout? You guys uh, fully deployed? Yeah, we, we use almost the whole suite. In fact, uh, we're the only customer to be using um, by Design's interface with a third-party payroll provider. And we were able to implement that 100% on our own, no SAP help. Um, and we'll look into expanding features in the future with the next version. You know, the classic uh, enterprise sales cycle is all about, you know, the shark fin. You know, and then underneath the waters is the, is the, is the, is the shark or the right. iceberg. Hidden costs. Right. Any hidden costs on this? I mean, what's, what's the experience on the cost side? Uh, I mean, you pay for the, what you the, get. Cost, the cost for me for, like, an on-demand platform would be you'd have to either hire someone or pay for some additional services. We haven't had to do that. Um, we actually have reduced the cost of by design since we started with it by uh, like lowering our subscription base. Yeah. So, so what's your background? Uh, my background is in implementing ERP systems. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how far back do you go? Because this is in context to know, you know we're in the battle <laughs> 2000, scars. 2004. So you got the battle scars. So you know the the old systems. You know the legacy. Yep. The payola. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. everyone was making so much Tesseract. money. It's just. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it was a freaking gravy train, you know, from 90s to, to from 95 to 2005, that was a 10-year run. Yeah, I mean, Everyone was making much money. Different, much different. Bloated now. environments, and then Oracle obviously made the run, um, PeopleSoft and all that integration, mm -hmm. kind of land grabbing the market. Um, obviously, there's been some stifled innovation over the past decade. Now with cloud, how do you personally see the cloud market? How do you look at that? And um, um, is, it exciting? is it exciting for you? Do you see anything in particular that you're really focused in on? I think uh, like what they talked about in the keynote earlier about a lot of individuals being able to innovate a lot more quickly, I think that's the opportunity with, with cloud, um, especially if these companies make their platforms open. Um, I'd like to see that with SAP. I'd like to see them open it up to individual developers and you know make it easier to get access to that functionality because I think the individuals have the ability to innovate you know, faster than a large company in some cases. What are, what's your view on the whole data science, data movement? Obviously, you're dealing with ERP, you're dealing with, obviously, DBAs, big data backends, obviously, you've got to factor in all that architecture, but now you're kind of seeing a kind of promiscuous environment with devices, new applications, mobile applications, kind of all sitting between those two layers now, right? So, mm -hmm. what's your view on that uh, market? Uh, that's, I haven't really thought about that one, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll go another direction then. Um, <laughs> Um, on a scale of one to ten, the ERP transformation to the new market, cloud mobile, all the hype and the sizzle. Um, where are we on that? I, you know, ten being we're there. Are we at a five with three? I think we're we're pretty. I mean, in some cases, the the ERP in the cloud is is just it's a lot better than what I've seen on premise. Like, there are way too many points of failure in your average PeopleSoft system, whereas what I've seen in by design. The whole platform is fully integrated, so you don't have to run 10 million interfaces and jobs to get, you know, to your accounting. So, from what what I've seen, the potential is much greater than with on. So it really comes down to who's got a clean sheet of paper, right? I mean, it does for you yeah. guys. It sounds like you had no leg real legacy, or no legacy, That's right? True. So yeah. zero legacy. That's true. And so you say, okay, go with the best solution. That's yep. cloud, right? Yep. For us, that's cloud. Yeah. What's your advice for folks out there who are kind of sitting there? 
um, the crap locations, as I was talking about earlier, <laughs> you know, got to sweep the floor, as the EMC guy was saying. You got that old environment. What's your advice to the folks who are dealing with that legacy piece and advice for colleagues that are in the same boat you are with the new environment who have a clean sheet of paper? Because you really got two camps, right? You got the, okay, I got to deal with this old sausage factory, and I got to now the clean sheet, innovative opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in either case, it's just about the cost and the benefit of each thing. I mean, if you're if you're killing your organization by paying the cost of these old systems, it's time to reevaluate that and look into moving into something else. Um, and then for the for the people there in the cloud environment now, it's up to people like us to push the innovation of these companies to continue to look at what customers actually want. What's your uh, next step with by design? Um, Is there any road uh, well upgrading to the next version? <laughs> and, um, there's more opportunities that we have with their CRM solution that I would like to use more. Um, I see that they have some line of business solutions coming up, like career on demand that I'm interested in in using. So a lot of these point solutions, like for the line of business that they have, I want to start looking into that next. Cool. So. Cool. What do you think about the show here at SAP? Describe for the folks out there the vibe here. Um, one, have you been to Sapphire before? Um, and uh, obviously you're doing a lot of press conversations and media conversations as a, as a, as a case study. What was your, how's your experience? One, how's the experience going? What's it like here? Um, I, love, I mean, I came last year, um, and, and the keynote this year was even more special than the one last year. I mean, the light show was ridiculous, but... Um, I mean, it's a good experience. You get to meet um, other customers, which you, you know how it is with By Design. There haven't been that many. Yeah. So just to get out there and, and see other people with that experience has been unique because yeah. 363 other days of the year, I don't get to see those people. So, What do you think about the whole Google Android against Apple iPhone? And well, I mean... Are, are, you, I, have, are you an Apple, Google, Android person? I mean, I, what's your preference? I use Personally. Android. I use Android, but... And that market is, is growing a lot faster than the iPhone market. So I'd like to see some more uh, traction with SAP in that area, for in sure. Which Android in particular? Yeah, or I mean. mobile in general? <laughs> well, Android in particular. I mean, for Business by Design, they're not going to have uh, an Android app and for several more releases. And they'll have, like a, they'll have a BlackBerry one in the next release, but no Android yeah. app. So. Just generally speaking about, you know, from your personal perspective, not about the SAP or any kind of that stuff, you know, what do you see the whole tech scene these days? I mean, obviously you're in tech, uh, you're in the tech business. I mean, tech lifestyle, I mean, iPad is like jewelry, I mean, yeah. iPad too. Yeah. It's like, hey, I got the iPad. It is very cool and it's fantastic. Um, but it's a, it's kind of a sexy piece of jewelry. And then you got the, the competitive Google going against Apple. You got Facebook out there, these Twitter, these new apps out there. I mean, do you see, what's your, what's your view on all that? I mean, you have an opinion? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just... You don't care? You like it? It's interesting. I, I like it. I mean... <laughs> It just looks like what's being put out in the market is what people actually want to use. I mean, where it doesn't look like, you know, solutions are being forced on people. Um, obviously, it's becoming a more collaborative and on-demand environment. So, yeah. I mean, that's why the cloud is exploding right now. You know, a couple of years ago, I looked at the cloud and didn't necessarily believe it was going to happen, but I, I believe it now. Okay, we're here at Judson Wickham with Pinkberry Ventures, a successful customer by design by SAP, business by design, the platform. They're checking the boxes. they got the core platform taken care of. He's had a great experience. The good news is it's turnkey, fully integrated. Some of the bad news is some of the software releases in the cloud from SAP a little bit delayed, but SAP, as they're telling us, a little testing there. So, obviously, great example of a clean sheet of paper opportunity for folks out there in the small, medium-sized enterprise. And... Uh, if you've got, you got the clean sheet of paper, you can do great things. So uh, congratulations. Thanks for coming on Inside the Cube. Appreciate uh, Thank your you. time. Thank you.